All right, so let's go to the fourth part of this presentation, talk about how Flex <clears throat> makes this all happen. How can you use Flex to make these three things happen? Being independent, uh, building your personal brand, and making money. So why Flex? Why would you utilize Flex? There's tons of uh, 30 on air.com. You can see videos on why Flex. Why I use Flex? It's fun. I enjoy using Flex. I enjoy it a lot. And there's you know, old school programmers that say the same thing, and there's new school programmers that say the same thing. Uh, it's in demand. There are a lot of people paying lots of money for Flex developers, software developers who are capable of producing work and applications in Flex. It's, a, you know, it's in demand. I get emailed at least, I don't know, three emails a day for job offers for it. You know, recruiters, non-recruiters, big companies. Companies like, please, do you know anybody, <laughs> right? Flex is varied. There isn't, there isn't just doing bank apps. Right with Flex, or doing these enterprise applications. Flex being used a lot of places that Flash was traditionally done, but because programmers had too high of a barrier for entry to Flash, Flex is now working in that area. Widgets, for example. Widgets were primarily the domain of either you know, small little Ajax embeddable div tags and JavaScripts, or Flash. Here's the Swift embedded, done, right? Typically done in Flash. A lot of them are doing Flex now, because you can create these really sophisticated applications in a small screen real estate, embed them, and it's you know, creating a lot of wonderful business opportunities for people. So you don't have to do these big apps. You, know, you could use them in a wide variety of areas. Uh, let's talk about the industry needs in Flex. Well, the first major thing people are looking for is enterprise Flex, both offline and all. That means error or not. People are looking for the traditional J2EE devs or the .NET guys who are the massive architects, who know how to get the database, the back end, the front end, the middle tier, all working together scalable to work over time to be industry, you know, industry professional. Are you someone who's capable of doing that and utilizing Flex? You are extremely valuable, okay? Widgets, can you create little Flex widgets? Can you create something, get it done, but yet make it a little bit scalable? Can you talk to back-end services? Can you bring dynamic data in there? Can you take that user interaction and worry about the security and you know, do metrics? Can you do all that in Flex for widget? I mean, there's a lot of work for that too. Uh, emerging, this is an emerging place. I've, I'm seeing a lot of embedded apps, which is either, for example, they're taking Flex, but they're not using it on a web page. They're either putting in some kind of unique Air application. Sometimes they have their own existing C or VB application they're embedding it into. Uh, that's, that's, it's, it, they're looking for people who are good at Flex, so when they put you in this, like, we're not sure if this will work scenario, they feel good about it, right? So there's a lot of people doing that. Um, a lot of people are using it on enterprise existing, like, systems that are not web browsers like that you would typically see for consumers, uh, a majority of them are behind the firewall. And there's a lot of work for that. Uh, so here's the roles that are in demand. Like I just said, enterprise architects, very in demand. I mean, if you've done you know, J2E installations or all that kind of stuff, very in demand. User experience is actually uh, finally <clears throat> getting more in demand. I think there's still a lot of clients who don't recognize why they should budget an extra 30K for you know, an additional project that's you know, three months or six months or whatever, just for an additional developer that doesn't actually code, doesn't design. You know, it, it's very, I've seen sales people and even consultants who have a horrible time of trying to sell that value to clients. A lot of usability engineers are very pragmatic about that. They say, look, if you want users to use your application, you hire me. If you don't, peace out. And you know, that's, that's fine, but I think it's your responsibility as a new you know, emerging market to really help these people sell you. Because I think you get more work. I mean, I've yet to see a project that didn't go you know, really smooth unless they had a user experience or IA or an action designer on the project, right? So because a lot of these developers have never done a lot of client work before, they've never a lot of done of staple applications before, and they never had a runtime as powerful as a flash for doing design, you gotta have somebody that can bridge that gap and say, here's how it's supposed to look, here's how it's supposed to work, you'll be fine, you know, I got it handled. Um, flash designers, a lot of these Flex guys are like, all right, the client doesn't like the way our app looks. Can you like design something cool? And I mean, a lot of times it's just that simple. It's not you know a negative in, in usability or anything. They just want it to look hot. Typically, Flash designers are more well equipped than existing Flex people that use in CSS. Flash designers can just figure it out, make it look hot. So Flash designers are definitely in demand. Uh, GUI specialist. This is what I consider myself. Someone who's really good at knowing the Flash player and really good at putting GUIs together. It doesn't mean I'm a designer, it just means that I'm really good at understanding how GUIs work and doing GUI client programming, right? A lot of these guys are existing J2E developers. When they get flexed, they're like, you know, suddenly I can have four developers not worry about the front end. They can just be doing Java web services all day. Fantastic. So we need one guy who's really good to focus on flex all day. 
And that's, you know, GUI specialists. That's what a lot of Flex guys are, at, but it's still in demand, high demand. So here are some roles for contractor consultants specifically, uh, leads. A lot of consultant firms and contractors are looking for architects, people who can architect applications. You're kind of like hired muscle, but you're brought in to make sure the project goes off without a hitch. You're creating a framework and make sure it works. You're creating an API, is this going to work for our clients, right? They're looking for those kind of people. Team lead, just come in and you know, inspire confidence in your team. You have experience. Can you convey that to the team and provide leadership? That's value. You know, a lot of people need that. User experience lead. I would much rather prefer every project have a user experience lead rather than you know, managers or developers or whatever, but there are a lot of projects that have user experience people and they're looking for them to lead the initiative because typically they're the one who you know, talk to every stakeholder, right? So user experience is uh, definitely needed. A manager of an outsourced team. I will never do this, but I've seen a lot of need for it. They typically are trying to cut costs, so they're either outsourcing to Costa Rica or uh, India or you know, just, you know, a lot of other places that charge less than I do. And they say, all right, look, you're going to be the project lead. You're going to be the manager. You create it. Let them do a lot of the GUI screens or whatever, and you can do the hard stuff and or the stuff that you have time to do. Sometimes they're capable of doing hard stuff too, right? So I've seen about two to three jobs that specifically look for it. Why do I say it's in a high role? It's role because it also counts for telecommuting. Sometimes you can be a project lead and be able to manage where people are not in the same room with you. So that's a very good skill to have. You can leverage and be a, a leader in that respect. So it's very useful. All right, contracting and consultant roles, just normal bread and butter. Mediator goes back to, I have a lot of experience in Flash and I have a lot of experience in Flex. I understand what designers say. I understand the assets they're going to give me, and I understand the ramifications of them designing certain things that programmers have no idea about, how much time it's going to take, how can I communicate to the project manager, right? I've also had enough experience in Flex to understand, okay, that's going to be hard, that's going to be easy, that's going to be cool, that's not going to work well, and I can bridge the gap. Any type of mediator, like you understand, let's say, back in PHP, and you've done enough Flex, okay? So you're good in the back end, you're good in the front end. You've done Ruby, you're good in the back end, and you've done enough front end. You know, it's good to have someone who can communicate to both, both roles, not just uh, one particular area. Team, team augmentation. There's a lot of people who just don't have enough flex developers. Are you busy? You got like two weeks? Ready? Go. I need some help. Uh, freelance. Freelance contractors. There's always people that have smaller scope projects that one dude can do alone, and that's freelance. You can just do you know, a project anywhere from like two weeks to two months, <clears throat> flash or flex. There's a lot of uh, contracting consultant roles for that too. Desired, but I've yet to be seen. I've yet to see usability engineering. So if you're a usability engineer, you would think that out of all places you would need to be flex applications. I've yet to see anyone specifically request that. It's very frustrating. So keep fighting the good fight. Flex roles I'm not seeing beyond usability engineering is Flash developer. A lot of people are getting bad taste in their mouths, just like they did back in uh, 2001, 2002. <clears throat> a lot of Flash developers are marketing themselves as flex developers. The problem with that is that flex developers because they're still associated with the enterprise, are still associated with traditional software development, understanding of design patterns, understanding of enterprise architectures, test-driven development, blah, blah, blah. So <clears throat> Flash developers come and go, oh, you know Flash, I know Flash player, I can use Flex, it's system XML, I'll do most of an action trip anyway. Or, you know, they know a little Flex, but most of their projects <clears throat> have anywhere from two weeks to two month deadlines, not six months, two years, 30 developers, you know, a lot of big teams or just, you know, <clears throat> more developers coming in in droves, right, over time. So I'm not seeing anyone, they used to, but now they're either A, if we can't find a flex developer and we can't afford the consulting, we'll just take our existing internal development staff and retrain them because over time it'll be worth it. Or they'll go hire a Java guy and train him, one of the two. Uh, designers typically dumped on one of the UX or IAs. They're not specifically requesting designers and so it's too late, just like usability. They typically go, uh, like, uh, hey, in, in, information architect, can you design this? It's pretty bad. So I, I don't know how to sell that better. I think they just assume that if they use Flex out of the box, it'll look hot. Don't ask me. That assumes that design is even considered. Again, a lot of the Flex projects I've seen are traditional software projects. Like, I don't see a lot of thought being given to the user experience. And this is not the consumer-facing apps. This is more the ones behind the firewall. They just don't think about the user, even though their users are using it every day. So design, you've got a hard sort of, at least in my industry. I've seen a lot of people in the consumer sphere, they're doing wonderful, like Scraplog. They're doing wonderful flex uh, applications, buzzword, I mean, all that kind of stuff. 